If you are new to Obsidian and you try to get your head around this application, these are a few settings that are going to help you a lot. I'm not going to go through the mainstream settings like changing theme or changing accent. These are the things that you can easily find out. These are rather a little bit more hidden and a little bit more useful. So let's get to work. Let's say you want your new files to be in a specific place rather than the root folder. What do you do? For me, for example, I create a new folder and I named it inbox. I want every file that I create to be stored in the inbox. So what I'm going to do is go into the settings and then under files and links, the folder here, default location for new notes, here by default is your vault folder. We want it to be in a specific folder that we define. So I created my inbox. I'm going to set it to be in the folder that is specified below. And I'm going to choose inbox from the list. As you can see, the inbox was selected. So once you do that, every new file that you create is going to be stored in your inbox. Let's try it. New file. And if I go here, I should see my new file is stored there. This is your files. What about attachments? Let's say I want my attachments not to be in the root folder, not to be in my vault, to be in a specific folder so I can manage them easily. For that, I created a folder named Z underscore assets. Why I named it Z underscore is because I want the indexing to push this folder to the bottom because this is the least important for me. I just want them to be uh, somewhere in my vault, but in a specific folder and this folder is always at the bottom. So what I'm going to do again, going back to the settings and in the same files and links, default location for attachments, again, by default is your vault folder. I want it to be in the folder specified below. And from the list, I will select that asset. The other thing that is useful is the behavior of the deletion. So once you press delete button on any file, it automatically moves to the system trash folder. Let's say we don't want that. We want to keep the trashed files within the Obsidian Vault. For that, there is also a settings here. First of all, we want to confirm file deletion because we don't want the file to be deleted just by a single accidental key press, right? So by default, this option, delete files, is on move to system trash. We want to put it into the move to obsidian trash. For that case, it will create a dot trash folder inside your vault and every deleted file will be moved there. Let's try it. So the new file that I created, let's delete it. First of all, deletion now requires a confirmation. If I press don't ask again, it will turn that settings off. We don't want that. So delete, it will tell me that it will be in the dot trash folder which is a hidden folder in your vault. Delete it. And when I go here and reveal my vault, I should be able to then go go to folder and then dot trash. Because it's a hidden folder, you have to manually push yourself into it. And I can see that the new file, the new deleted file is in my .trash, which is a hidden folder. Did you know that Obsidian keeps a snapshot of your files and keep the changes for a duration, for an interval that you define? If you didn't know, then you want to go here and in your file recovery, in your settings, click on it and check the intervals of its snapshots. It tells me that it would take every five minutes and the history length would be up to seven days. It will keep the snapshots for up to seven days. Let's try one of the files that I know that was basically just now created. And then you can see that it took five minutes for each individual snapshot to be taken. And if I press it, press the older snapshot and go to the show changes, it will show what were the changes. This way, you can revert to an older history of your file. So if you have unwanted changes, you can keep a history and push the file back to its previous state. 
It's gonna be very helpful for those of you who want to backup and restore. It works as a safe backup for you. You can change the interval, you can keep the file for longer, snapshots for longer. You can reduce the duration of snapshots and then you can also clear history which clear the snapshots for you. You know that feeling, right? The one where your desk is a battlefield of open tabs, scattered notes, and half-formed ideas. You're trying to connect the dots, synthesize information, and actually think, but your tools just aren't keeping up. In fact, they're probably making it worse. I used to be overwhelmed, constantly jumping between Notion for notes, ChatGPT for answers, my browser for research, and then trying to pull all it together in my head. It was exhausting. The traditional tools are built for execution, for checking off boxes, not for real exploration. And Ponder is there to solve this problem. Ponder is an open space canvas, which captures your idea and gives you a sophisticated infinite canvas with sophisticated AI tools to help you build and form your thoughts. It can't be easier to pull data from PDFs, YouTube videos, and knowledge from internet all together and form them the way you want in a non-linear fashion. The genius idea of open canvas space allows you to go as big as you want. It helps you form your knowledge as you wish. It pulls data from YouTube, from internet, from files that you can drop in and then you can reformat these data the way you want. You can make mind map, you can create your own cards, reshape and restructure, summarize, and literally do whatever you want. You can quiz yourself based on the data that you learned. And best of all, the AI agent and chat are always there for you. The AI agent is connected to the best of the tools such as GPT, Gemini, and Claude. And probably there is no more you can ask for. The variety of share options allow you to interact with any other application outside. So you can export, for example, in form of Markdown or Mind Map, and then import it into Obsidian application. Experience Ponder now. Visit ponder.ing, use the link in the description, along with the code provided for discount. The rest of the settings that I'm gonna go through are more of visuals to make your environment more comfortable for yourself and less of functionals. So if you didn't know, you can literally drag anything around and put them in the side panels. For example, here I have my graph. The graph can be moved anywhere. You can have more than one or two items in each side panel. You can even have notes in each side panel. For example, I can drag this note, which is open here, and just drop it under my folder list. I usually keep the side panel one side to my tags because I use a lot of tags and the left one to the folders. On the bottom I use a graph and on the right hand side I use uh, the calendar extension which is a third party extension. The next one that I want to show you is basically help you read the lines better. So for example if you have a long article you want to see the line numbers it will show you the line number for entire file. So it's under if I'm not editor and this setting show line numbers if I press it and activate it you can see that it shows the line number for each individual lines so the way you see this is a bit weird is because this was a single line and it was broken down because of the way that this space is narrow so if I press enter here then you can see that it corrects the line number again pressing enter here it will correct the line numbers for me and it arrange the rest of the lines accordingly. The next one is under appearance is font size and also zoom level. Adjusting these two will help you get your eyes comfortable with the size of the font. For example, if I want a little bit bigger font and I also want my entire environment to be a little bit bigger, I can do so. so I can zoom in a little bit further and I can increase the font size just to make reading easier. If I want to make my environment more minimalistic and more focused, I can do so. I can get rid of a lot of things here. So for example, for this panel, I can just collapse the panels. I can get rid of this title bar. I can get rid of these ribbons and I'll show you how. So you go to appearance and here you will see that 
you have your show title bar, show tab title bar, which by default is on. You can turn it off. You can see that the line disappeared over there and ribbon also, you can disappear it. And once I'm back, I can get rid of that panel as well. So back to that, the ribbon got more ability. So if the ribbon comes really helpful and you're gonna need it, you can still rearrange it and add or remove things from it. By enabling it, it appears, and by managing it, you can literally rearrange things in it or remove them or add them back. And one final bonus, you can achieve the same minimalistic environment entering immediately into a Zen mode by a third party plugin, which I'm gonna show you how to install and use it. If you watched my previous video, you should know that how you can uh, go to community plugins, turn on the community plugins and search for community plugins. So community plugins, turn on, click browse, and then here in your search bar, type Zen and mod. There is this plugin called Zen, you can install and once installed, you can enable it and then press here, assign a hotkey to it. So it has a toggle only hotkey. You can literally assign any shortcut key, press plus here. I'll press uh, command shift option Z because I know that it's not gonna override anything. It's just a very unique shortcut key. And let's say I have all the panels again I have my ribbon, I have everything. Once I press my, my short key for entering Zen mode, see what happens. It automatically hides everything, puts you in a focus mode to just write your writing. 